Hey, this is Brock Lemires, and we're continuing our study of embedded systems design by looking at more data manipulation instructions. In this video, we're going to go over the subtract instruction, which has a mnemonic of SUB. And what this does is exactly what you would think it does. It's going to take the destination. Well, actually, it's going to subtract two numbers. What you have to keep track of, though, are a few things. Number one, it's the destination minus the source goes into the destination. So you have to keep track of the order of what you're doing. So you're going to do, <clears throat> you know, destination minus source. Keep that in mind. It for sure does 8 and 16-bit uh, operations by appending .w or .b to it. And again, this works the same regardless of whether you're using signed or unsigned numbers. And it's a the one strange part of this, though, is going to be how you track borrows. OK, so computers don't they don't implement subtractors in reality. What they do is they use two's complement and addition to perform the subtraction. And so if you look at this, consider this right here, A minus B. That is the same as saying A plus negative B. <clears throat> and so the reason that you, you need to understand this is because we track whether a borrow occurred by using the carry flag. And it turns out that if you look through like the details of how this two's complement works to take, uh, you know, the two's complement of B here to make it a neg negative number, it'll help you understand why that when there's a borrow, you get a carry equal to zero. <clears throat> and when there's not a borrow, you get a carry is equal to a one. So let's go through two examples by hand uh, <clears throat> and see how this works. So first of all, if you're gonna do, let's, let's take a eight bit number. Uh, let's do FF minus zero one, okay? So this is real obvious that the answer of the, the difference between these is gonna be FE and you do not have a borrow here, okay? So <clears throat> if you put it in binary, you know, FF is all ones, Zero one is seven zeros followed by one. And so you can just look at this and say, okay, I know what the result is supposed to be. It's supposed to be FE or one, 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 zero. <clears throat> now let's take a look at how you could do this by instead of doing subtraction using addition, but taking zero one hex and turning it into a negative number. The way you turn it into a negative number is you take the two's complement negation of it. Now let's remind ourselves how two's complement negation works. It's a two-step process. The first thing is that you complement all the bits in the number. <clears throat> so you're gonna take the zero, 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 one, and you're gonna complement all numbers. So it becomes one, 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 zero. The second step to taking the two's complement negation is you add one to it. So now if I added one to this number, <clears throat> I end up with all ones, okay? Now I'm going to take this new value, which is 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1, 1. That is the two's complement representation of negative 1. Okay, so we're basically going to go FF plus negative 1. And this is, now remember also, when you use two's complement codes, you have to know the number of bits. So this is valid for an 8-bit two's complement code. So let's, let's see what happens if I take the original FF which is represented here in binary as all ones, and I take my new negative one two's complement code for as the second number that I'm going to subtract, and I add them instead of subtract. <clears throat> so let's see what happens in this, in this operation. One plus one is zero with a carry. One plus one plus one is one with a carry. One plus one plus one is one with a carry. Then we get one with a carry, 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 and you have a carry out. So look at the number here. Look at the value. It is one 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 zero. It <clears throat> so let's take a look at the result here. So I'm going to go one plus one is zero with a carry. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 1 with a carry. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 1 with a carry. Then it's 1 with a carry, 1 with a carry, 1 with a carry, 1 with a carry, and you get 1 with a carry out. 
So check out the answer here. I added these two numbers together and I got 11111110. That is the answer that we wanted to get. So that it worked. <clears throat> so this actually does truly work by taking uh, two's complement of the second number, which in this case will be the, the source, and adding them together, and you will actually, it'll actually work. Okay. So like life is good. Now, the borrow is what we care about. Though. Think about this. There was no borrow needed here. There was absolutely no borrow. <clears throat> and the carry was set. So that means that when you don't have a borrow, the carry flag is a one. Now let's look at a different case. Okay, let's look at a different case. Here's a second example. In this situation, let's subtract uh, FF from zero one. So my hex value right here is gonna be zero one hex minus FF. And if I put these in binary, I get zero, 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 one <clears throat> minus all ones. And I can look at this as it actually not terrible. One minus one is a zero. <clears throat> zero minus one is a, it's actually a one. And then the result is zero, 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 zero. Okay. There is a borrow though. So if you think about this, uh, let's look at this. One minus one is a zero. Zero minus one. I need a borrow. <clears throat> okay. So I do need a borrow for this position to to complete the subtraction. So I'm gonna borrow from this position right here. I'm gonna borrow from the th basically the second position bit. If this is bit zero, P equals zero, P equals one, P equals two. I'm gonna borrow from this position and that makes this position one zero. <clears throat> so I get one zero minus one and I get one. Now I have one zero here, or excuse me, I have this had a borrow in it. So now to, in order to make this subtraction work, uh, it is now going to need a borrow from here and a bar from here, and a bar from here, and a bar from here, and a bar from here. So in order to actually borrow from this higher order position, since it was a zero, I had to borrow all the way out to here. So I had a borrow all the way out, <clears throat> and then that trickled through all these, and that allowed me to ultimately get to something where <clears throat> I had one minus one is a zero, and then I had this was one zero minus one was that, <clears throat> and then this was, <clears throat> there was a bar here, so it was one minus one, borrow here, 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 one minus one, and there was a borrow. So <clears throat> I have a borrow on this. That's the answer, right? That is absolutely the answer. Okay, so now let's do what the MSP430 does. Instead of subtracting, it is gonna take the two's complement of this number, okay? And it's going to then add them. So what would happen if I did that? Remember, two's complement negation is a two-step process. So I'm gonna take one, 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 and I'm gonna complement it. I take the complement of every number, so I get all zeros, and then the second step to two's complement negation is I add one to it. So the answer here is if I wanted to convert uh, FF into its negative value, its code would be 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. Okay, so let's take that now and add it to our original, <clears throat> and we're gonna do this same thing, I'm going to take the top number, which I leave leave alone, and I'm going to put the new negative number down here, which is the negative representation of FF. So it'd be basically negative FF. And that's the two's complement code for it. <clears throat> I add these two. I get one plus one is zero with a carry. And then I get one plus zero plus zero is one. And then I don't have any other zeros. <clears throat> so look at what happened. The answer is identical. So I, it did work. It got me the right value for the difference. And there was no carry out. Okay, so there was no carry out. That means that carry out equals zero represents a borrow. Because if, if I go back to my original number, I know that I had to have a borrow for this because the top number was smaller than the bottom number. <clears throat> and that's just the way it was. When I did it in binary, if I did the subtraction, I watched it, I watched that borrow be generated because I had zero on top and one here. So I had to actually take a borrow here, take, and then it didn't have a value. So I had to take a borrow, take a borrow, take a borrow, take a borrow, take a borrow. And where does the borrow come from to even make this work? Well, it's this borrow flag that kind of fictitiously sits out here <clears throat> and that's fine. But th what this demonstrates is that the carry flag will give us information about whether a borrow was needed. It's just the opposite logic from a carry. So for example, if there's a borrow, C will equal zero. If there's a no borrow, C is equal to one. And you can only see that if you actually go through kind of the binary representation. And remember that 
the, the MSP430 doesn't really do subtraction. It does two's complement negation of the second number, and then it's, it adds them. <clears throat> okay, that was a long way of showing why, <laughs> if there's a borrow, C is equal to zero, okay? So if you never remember anything else, just remember that, because you don't actually have to care about this. You don't do any two's complement negation. The MSP430 does it automatically for you, <clears throat> and it's all behind the scenes. It's just that you need to interpret the carry flag correctly. Okay, let's do an example. Let's do that exact same example. So here's what I want to code up. Let's do FF minus 01. Okay, and we'll, the way we'll do it is we'll put FF in a register, we'll put 01 in a register, and then we'll subtract the source from the destination. So this is going to be FF, which is in R4. <clears throat> it's remember, this is the destination, and it's going to go destination minus the source put back in the destination. So our difference is gonna end up in R4 in this example, and we will not have a borrow, okay? The result should be FE, and we won't have a borrow, which says that the C flag should be set. Then we'll do that exact same example where we'll put 0, 1 minus FF, and in this situation, there should be a borrow, which will be indicated by C is equal to zero. Okay, so that's the example we wanna code, and let's fire up Code Composer. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna do file new CCS project. And I will come over here and I'm gonna make sure my CPU or my MCU is set up correctly. I'm gonna call this AS, ASM underscore, underscore ALU, we'll do sub, okay? Empty only, boom. Okay, life is good. And I'll get my little example over here. Actually, you know what the example is? is yeah, that's fine. That's fine. That's what we're going to type. So anyway, we're not even going to use memory allocation. So this will be pretty quick because we can just go like this. First of all, set your main loop. Uh, come over here and do a jump main. All right. And then we're off and running. So let's do move.b. And this is going to be immediate addressing. I want FF hex. But remember, you have to put a zero in front of it. And then... I'm gonna say, let's put that in R4, and then we'll do move bot B, and we'll do immediate addressing, and I'll do uh, 0, 01 hex, and put that in R5, and then here comes our instruction that we're looking at, sub, and let's do, notice I'm doing dot B, because we're doing an eight bit example. The only reason is that it's just, when you do when you try to do an example by hand, it's, it's easier to do eight bits, because 16 bits takes so long to write out. So I'm gonna do R5, R4. <clears throat> Remember, it's gonna be destination minus source back in the destination. And I can do that, I can say destination equals destination minus source, just to keep track. Okay, so that's gonna be our first one and we should have no borrow there. And then let's do our second example, which is gonna be pound 01H, we'll put that into our six, and then we'll do move up B, we'll go pound immediate addressing uh, FF hex, but I gotta remember to put a zero. And then we'll put that in R7, and then I'll do my sub.b, and I'll do R7, R6. And again, that is gonna be destination equals destination minus source. So that's gonna take this dude, R6, which is holding 0, 01, minus R7, which is FF, and that's what we're ultimately trying to do. So that's, that's what we're doing right there. Okay, fired up, go ahead and debug, plug in your MSP430, and... It's gonna assemble it, link it, create the executable object file, download it, and start a debug session. And I am caring about these instructions. So I'm gonna go ahead and come down here in my main program, set a breakpoint. So I go ahead and run to the breakpoint. And now I wanna be able to see a few things in the register viewer. I wanna see R4, R5, R6, and R7, but I also wanna see the carry flag because the carry flag isn't gonna tell me whether I have a bar or not. Okay, so watch, here we go. I'm gonna go ahead and step. So FF goes into R4, 0, 01 goes into R5, and now when this completes, the, the difference, the, the result will go into R4. So this should go to FE. So here we go, I'm gonna go step it, boom. I got the right difference, so I got the, the right result, and look at carry. It's a one, you're like, why is it a one? That means there was no borrow.
Okay, there was no borrow. All right. Now, who, who uses this? Who uses the borrow? It, the answer is you do. It, you have to care whether or not there's a borrow. So you would have to do something if you saw that there was or was not a borrow. Okay, now let's go here. Let's go our second example, which is going to be let's load 0, 01 into R6. Okay, so I go ahead and step. There it goes. And then I put FF into R7. And now when I do this, I'm expecting to get an answer, which is going to be put into R6. So here we go. I'm going to step it. And boom, lo and behold, <clears throat> I got the right answer. So 0, 01 minus FF was 0, 02. But look at the carry. There was carry is equal to zero. That means I had a borrow. So that means that I had a borrow there. Okay, that's how it works. I mean, that's it. It's a, it's a relatively simple instruction. But remember that whenever you do subtraction, you have the concept of negative numbers, no matter what. 50% of subtractions will result in a, in a negative number. So there's no such thing as using unsigned numbers and subtraction because you're going to always have, you're, most of the time you're going to have, a, or half the time you're going to have a negative result. So unsigned numbers don't apply to a subtraction. But that is it. That is the subtract instruction on the MSP430. And that's how the barrel is tracked using the carry flag. And that is it. Nice work. Uh, remember, subscribe to my channel to stay up to date on the latest videos. And I'll talk to you later.